It's one day after the death of legendary El Paso figure Willie Cager. The world is still grieving the loss of one of the members of the 1966 Texas Western National Championship basketball team that broke down racial barriers. And that's right, Cager settled here in El Paso after his playing days becoming a beloved member of the community. For more on Cager's passing, here's KTSM 9 Sports Director Colin Deaver. Guys, Willie Cager died yesterday at the age of 81 on the 57th anniversary of that barrier shattering Texas Western team winning the 1966 National Championship. His son Kareem called that poetic, but it's still a sad day for the Sun City. Cager was beloved all over the world for what he meant to basketball as well as the civil rights movement, but more importantly for the great man that he was. Born and raised in the Bronx, New York, Willie Cager came to play for Don Haskins in Texas Western in 1964 with two of his childhood friends, Neville Shedd and Willie Worsley. Together, they were three of the seven players that made up the 1966 minors that made history as the first team to win a national championship with an all-black starting five. It's kind of like a lifetime friendship that we have, and plus, I to realize, too, Cager was my roommate. Those 12 guys are the men of Glory Road, and no matter what comes after us, you know, hey, we'll always be number one. Cager and the 1966 Miners were inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and immortalized in the 2006 movie Glory Road. Cager was always proud of what that team accomplished and what they meant on a grander scale. It was very important because it was, you know, part of, of, of history and it should be what in all, all the schools. Cager was drafted into the NBA, but never played, instead making a life for himself in El Paso. He was a mentor to generations of kids in the Sun City and at UTEP. It just meant so much, you know, to our program. We bring in players and recruits, and he'd come by practice, and that's that. That's it. You know, you talk about it, but he's it. He's lived it. He was a part of it, and uh, we're definitely going to miss that, no doubt. His smile and iconic laugh made him a friendly face to everyone he met, and he'd tell anyone who'd listen, he was the best player there ever was. He had an art. That was very unique, being able to get to the basket. And uh, he always thought he was the best player. <laughs> That's one thing. No one was better than Willie Cage. In his later years, Cager was a coach at Tornillo, set up an after-school basketball center for Isleta ISD, and wrote a book. Walking up to Willie always meant your day was about to get better. You know, he made you laugh. And, you know, kids kids uh, always came up to him, and he had a hug for him something encouraging to say. It don't matter who it was. Everybody loved Willie Cage. Funeral arrangements are still pending, but there's hope for a memorial to be held either at the Haskins Center or Memorial Gym. Cager is the sixth member of that 66 team to pass away along with Don Haskins, Orson Artis, Harry Flournoy, Bobby Joe Hill, and Jerry Armstrong. He's been honored all day by people around the country, including Rodney Terry and Sule Boom, Joe Golding, Beto O'Rourke among them. Coming up in sports, more on Cager's passing and his community impact, including for the Parkland boys basketball team. Guys.